right, you maggots, listen up. All right, what you're looking at is a real GE Super Radio. Uh, they've, they've made these in batches over the years, but this is an older uh, GE Super Radio, and it has the, well, I showed you on the last video, it has the long ferret rod, it has an amplified RF front end. I do believe it's probably dual conversion. Um, GE came out with this radio uh, probably, let's see, in the 80s. Uh, maybe, yeah, early 80s. And what it was for is if you, you lived up out in the mountains, this radio would pick up stations when other radios didn't. Now, as a quick disclaimer, cell phones have killed AMDXing off. All right, streaming basically has killed AMDXing. But AMDXing started when back in the crystal set days the really good crystal sets that had really good uh high q coils good set of headphones a 250 foot antenna a good ground a person late at night could put their their crystal radio set on and uh stations would skip in and they would be able to receive uh stations from other states and they would log them down Maybe send the station a letter saying they received them and then they get a postcard back. And so it was a hobby. And then the next time uh, I was myself, I, that, these are the stories my dad told me about with Crystal Radio and DX. And he would also listen to WKBW uh, in his car. And it, it, we'd be driving along and you could, it would fade in and out. It was really noisy. But he preferred uh, WKBW which was a rock station over WABC in New York. Well, anyway, so I always thought that was kind of odd. And then whenever I'd get a radio to see if it was sensitive, uh, not selective, I explained this once before, uh, I would try to dial in WKBW. It was a 50,000-watt station. Uh, I believe it's Buffalo, New York. Well, anyway, I would know if I could pick that station up on an AM radio, it was really sensitive. It was a better radio. So now... We get into the um, 60s, and uh, suddenly people are getting into hockey, ice hockey. And a lot of the games were not televised in New York. So a bunch of guys that were really into hockey uh, basically figured out, or someone told them, that in between the stations at night, you could pick up uh, Canadian stations, and you could listen to the hockey game. It wasn't televised in the United States, but at least you could hear the action on a good AM radio. So that was when AM radio started doing a little bit better. And uh, they started coming out with like a, the GE Super Radio. Uh, radio Shack, over the years, has always had, a, a, they call also call it a long distance radio. Um, there's a couple different names for the same thing. And I showed you what's inside. Basically, the ferret rod is longer, and you have, uh, there's, there's, the tuning cap has three sections. It tunes the, the ferret rod, another coil with an amplifier, and then after that coil. So, in other words, there's three tuned circuits involved to bring the signal into the radio. A cheap radio, uh, the loop on the back basically uh, goes into the mixer, and there is a little bit of amplification, but... You're only going to get local stations, so you're not going to be able to DX. And DX stands for D for distance, X for unknown. You're, you're looking for a station that's far away, but you don't know how far away it is. And that's the hobby of DXing. And I get the definition from the two bobs from uh, the shortwave the radio. Uh, now I'm going to forget Switzerland, Netherlands, whatever. The two bobs used to be on shortwave. And people would write them letters, and the person says, what does DX stand for? And the, one of the bobs said D for distance, X for unknown. That's what it stands for. It's a hobby. So over the years, uh, GE has had this radio. And GE is RCA. RCA is GE, back and forth. And there's some of these that are not made that well. Now, I use a, DX, a Radio Shack DX390 radio. I showed you it many times. It's a digital radio. I went in and took a resistor out. So that radio is just as good as the GE Super Radio. That's why this thing looks dusty. I found the better radio. And having it be digital uh, means a lot. In other words, you, you tune it into the frequency you're looking for 
or a station you got the night before, you tune the digital on, now you're dead on, now you just rotate the radio. Remember, the radio has a ferret rod in it, and if you rotate the radio, you, the signal gets stronger. Or you can null out a station that's interfering on the same frequency. It, it's a hobby. Uh, the, the, the draw of the hobby is you're, you're picking up stations somewhere else, and the music might be different. Now, years ago, uh, I used to DX with the uh, a national NC125, and I had a four-foot loop antenna. I built a box loop. And uh, you would pick up a lot of country western stations, uh, still this side of the Mississippi. Remember, uh, the stations with W in the, in the call letters is east of the Mississippi, and K is is west of the Mississippi. There's a lot to the hobby, but cell phones have killed the hobby. Now, I just wanted to show you, uh, this is what a GE Super Radio, uh, like the, I was trying, it looks like, I was trying to get the, uh, the Sweet 16 station on here. It, it's right in this mess. It's still, it's still early in the morning, and uh, you still get stations uh, further away. That are skipping in and at some point uh sweet 16 will switch their power or they switch on more power and you can pick them up and there's a rock uh it's a, a classic rock station they play oldies on it it's a pretty good station and this radio will get it this radio goes to 1600 uh actually 1700 and it's very sensitive up there so a lot of radios uh they poop out at 1500 so if you're trying to get one of the newer um frequencies uh, don't forget, over the years, they added frequencies onto the, at the top of AM. And that was to allow little community stations and Hispanic stations to have their own frequencies. So that's what that extra band is for. And now with cell phones, it's basically obsolete. But this is, this is the radio that everybody starts with or used to start with. All right? Now, I want to show you this thing. I've done a video on this thing. This radio... This radio was built by an engineer at GE, and he wanted to show, you know, it's got a grill. This is a metal grill. He, he built it like a car radio. It sounds like a car radio. It has the long um, ferret loop in it. It has that extra coil that's tuned with the, the, with the three-section capacitor. Uh, so this is basically, some people call this a super radio. It's the, the, When he built it, he put the, all the best everything in there. It's got a giant audio output transformer. So when you turn this thing on, it sounds like a car radio, an older AM car radio. Some of you probably don't even know what that means. But years ago, before FM became popular, they really put in a wide band uh, AM radio in the, in the car. And it would pick up one of the super stations in the country. And you'd ride around, and that's how you got your tunes. And this is before A-track players came along. See, at one point, everybody had an AM, AM, uh, AM radio in their car. There was no A-track. There was no cassettes. There were people that had record players in their car. I know. Go, go look at the history. It's wackadoodle stuff. It's lots of fun. All right. So this, is, this was basically, you could call this the first super radio. I showed you the, the most common one. And this was an interim. This was, this was one uh, made after this, this big brown one. And it's well made. Uh, it goes up to it goes up to 1600, and it's a pretty good radio. Uh, I the some I, sometimes I have trouble with this on and off switch. It doesn't always want to stay down, but the reason these things are dusty and I don't use them is because I got the DX390, which I opened it up and I cut out a resistor and modified it, and that's why. But the uh, hobby uh, of uh, AM DXing. Uh, it's been around since the beginning of crystal radio sets and it, the resurgence came when they started doing ice hockey because there were no cell phones There was no cable television uh, te Television was you had you had uh, in, in New York you had four good stations and then a bunch of smaller ones that had kids shows on it You didn't have your ice hockey game on there and later on uh, the smaller stations were playing hockey at night, uh, like on a Saturday night or a Friday night. Your only option was to get a good AM radio. And uh, a lot of the guys would have me tune the radio to the station. And I'd put a piece of masking tape on the dial. 
and would it would it would and, and ink it up so they could find that station and they would be at, at school the next day and they're all excited uh because they were able to hear the hockey game things change you know you can stream it probably live on your cell phone now but that's what the hobby was now what the hobby made another surge and surge uh, i can tell you 1975 right around that time uh, i was working in the radio shack and my father was bringing home these big philco radios and it was it was a lake community and one of the guys that my dad worked with had a house up in that lake community and you couldn't get anything from new york city you could you couldn't get any am stations at all so they thought so one guy being in a, to the lake house, he brought an old radio up there that worked. And he plugged it in, and uh, he turned it on. He noticed he could get the stations from New York, um, maybe maybe up to the Poconos, up that way. So anyway, he comes into work, and uh, he tells my father. My father says, oh, yeah. Uh, he explained it. My father explained to the guy that over the years they take the parts out of the radio because the public is effing stupid, okay? So... They know you only listen to local stations back in those days. So they, they take the, the big front end out of the radio. With a Philco, when that old 1937 Philco was sold, uh, it had to be capable of getting stations because you, they sell you a radio for $300. Uh, it better pick something up or you're going to bring it back. So it had such a good front end on it. And some of them even have this giant muffler antenna in there. You got to go read up on it. Just some of this stuff's really cool. So in other words, the radio could pick up really faint stations far away and present them in such a way it was you could actually understand what the person saying and the music was decent so all of a sudden that lake community these people are shut off they have telephones but they can't get anything oh and they couldn't get television either there, there was no cable so if you had a lake community and you got a day where it's raining uh you were basically you could sit and read uh maybe play a phonograph well, this guy tells people, I get stations on my radio. So they all start digging up these old Philco radios. And every night, my father's bringing one of these radios home. I'm, I'm setting it up and get it working. And it goes back, and the person thanks me. They pay me some money. And um, it, it's going on in that. And at the same time, uh, I'm working at the radio shack. And uh, I'm talking to a guy. I'm telling him the story. I said, man, every night i got to fix another old radio. You know, I, they're out in the, I explained the whole thing, and he basically, I can't think of the name of the, the section of New Jersey he lived in, but he went over a big mountain, and he bought a new house up the, up 46 or up, up 80, and basically, once you went over the mountain, you couldn't get any stations. Well, he figured out that Radio Shack had a long-distance AM radio. Sometimes, sometimes they call it uh, a, a long-distance and sometimes they call it powerful. It's not really powerful. Powerful would be transmitting. Well, anyway, he told me, he, he points to me. I'm working in the radio shack. I'm behind the counter. And he points to this radio. And it's that gray. And I showed you one of them, uh, the last video. He points to that thing. And I'm going, I'm looking at reading it. I'm like, first thing I did, I'm going to tell you what I did. Uh, I got a screwdriver. And I opened it up and looked inside. And right away, I saw... The equivalent of what was in the uh, tube radios, the the, the honking, um, in that case, ferret rod. Now, the old Philco radios, inside the cabinet, they had a big loop sometimes. And that was so you could get the stations without running a 150-foot piece of wire. But anyway, I opened the radio up, and right away, I see it's got a really large ferret rod check. Uh, a, a coil that looks like an IF cam over by that area, check. That's, that's tuning along with the, the ferret rod. And another, uh, it's tuning the, also, it tunes the, the ferret rod, the secondary amplifier, or the RF amp, which has a coil, and then also the coil for the mixer. They All three of those tune together. Very similar to a car radio. I don't know if you've ever sat in an old car, and you're tuning the AM broadcast band, and the car radio seems to really pick up good well think about it you're you're on a long trip you want to be able to have a station that doesn't disappear on you so car radios if you take the old car radios apart i think they're mopars you take them apart there's three pistons in there and those are coils they do it a little bit different but there's three tuned sections uh for the front end you know the mixer 
they, uh, they, they, uh, they use a rod antenna on a car radio. So you have a, a coil that's tuning that to resonate it at the frequency. And then you got the RF amp, which has another coil to tune that. So that's why really old uh, AM radios are, are very good. You could sit, when you go to work in the morning, you could sit in the car and DX stations. And that's what everybody was basically doing. And then as cell phones came out, it killed everything. I mean, it's killing everything. Let's face it. But I just want to give you a bit, a bit of an insight. You know, you got the people like my father uh, wasn't really happy with WABC out of New York. Uh, MCA had switched off being rock. So my dad was listening to WKBW and he, he got his, his sister lived up in Buffalo. And then when he would call her, he'd say, oh, here you have a really bad snowstorm. See, he, he'd get the weather report every day from Buffalo. So whenever he called his sister, uh, he knew basically how, how bad the storms were and everything because he was listening to WKBW. And that imprinted on me. And then whenever I'd repair a radio for someone, uh, I had been inside and I would look at what's in it. And then I'd say, this should pick WKBW up. And I'd tune it. And it would get it. So after a while, I knew what you had to have in the radio in order for it to be a DX ray. Now, I tell you, I like the DX390. Uh, it's pretty good as it is. Got to remember, it, it's a very sensitive radio, the DX390. And it's digital. It's the Radio Shack. And a lot of people will tell you, uh, the guys that shoot from the hips in the, in the forums, ah, that radio's no good. You walk across the carpet and touch the antenna, and the fat in the front end blows out. Well, don't, put hard, don't wear hard sole shoes. In, on, on a rug surface when you're working with the radio because as you walk on the carpet your body charges up you touch the radio a high voltage spike goes into the uh, antenna you the uh, ferret rod not the ferret rod the uh, the metal rod um, um, with the telescopic antenna and it burns the front end out sure that happens it also happens with a Sony 2010 if you ever have a chance to get a Sony 2010 that's another radio I don't know if it's got the I know it's really good DXing AM, and it's a digital radio. And when I bought the Sony 2010 uh, home, I noticed right away I could get WKBW whenever I wanted. Uh, back in the old days, at, at, at later at night, 6:50 AM is uh, uh, Na uh, Nashville, uh, the Grand Old Opry. And then I told I tell them people about 7:40 out of Canada. It's called Zuma Radio, and it plays 70. At the seven o'clock, eighty music at eight o'clock. Um, I think maybe nineties at nine o'clock. But anyway, on the weekend it plays big band type music. It's a very different station. And sure, you, you know it's Zoomer Radio. It's seven ten a.m. out of Canada. You key it in. Now you can listen to it on your radio. So you don't need an AM DX radio. But in the case of uh, I'm outside, say painting the house or doing yard work. I take one of my better radios outside, I plug it into an extension cord, and uh, I listen to, like, um, we call it, it's called Sweet 16 here. And it plays, it has a really big playlist because it gets it from the internet. So they're not playing the same records over and over and over and over. So uh, when it comes on, uh, I don't have the other one plugged in now, but anyway, uh, pretty another 20 minutes or so, it'll be working really good for, until about 6 o'clock at night, and they shut the power back. Whatever time they, they do that. But that's the station. During the day, uh, I'll pop it on on my DX390. And I'll listen to the song. And I go, boy, I haven't heard that song in 50 years. That's how good the play selection is on that station. And then I'll go on uh, YouTube and click on it and uh, listen to it there in stereo. All right? So that's it's sort of, a ho it's st it's sort of a, still a hobby for me. Uh, at night, putting Zoomer radio on, you know, I turn the TV off, I have the computers off, and uh, just before I go to bed, I'll put on uh, uh, 740 out of Canada, AM, and listen to whatever they're playing. And their commercials are totally different. Uh, a lot of it's for cruises. It's not, it's not your local type of station. It, it's, it's, it's set up differently, okay? Uh, I did say, okay. Uh, I, 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 someone commented the other day on me, again, we're tired of you saying okay. Don't watch my videos. Do me a favor. Uh, it's, a, it's a habit. But I just want to give you a quick overview why you would DX at, based on the old days, why you might still do it now. Now, you could be in an area of the country that you can't get anything 
Uh, I can't think of the name of the part of the section of New Jersey. They had they had to have they had Salmon's Cable. It was a, a guy owned a little cable company, and he would amplify the signal from a, a hill, and and feed it down into the home. So if you bought one of those ha homes, uh, it was something Valley. Anyway, uh, it was up to by the ski resorts in New Jersey, and uh, if you didn't buy his cable, you got no television. You could get no AM radio. And I started telling people, get a Radio Shack radio. And they, they were. So at least, if you want to know what the weather was going to be the next day, you would put this AM radio on and you could get it. Because back then, you didn't have you didn't have cable. Or you had salmons. And you paid a monthly fee for, you know, he got, he got the signal from a mountain and amplified it. That's what you were getting. And later on, he added HBO. And then I think he got, he got bought out by RT Cable or one of them. Anyway... I would hear these stories every day, and a lot of people, they would uh, come up to me and someone would say, you, you, there's a radio that should work up in my area, and I would tell them, and a lot of them would go in the radio shack, and the radio, I think it was, I think it was just $29, and they thought that was too much money for an AM radio, and it was, it's AM only, there's no FM on it. With a super radio, uh, on sale, you could get, I think they, they went as low as $35, and some guy came in the shortwave radio station, uh, shortwave store, and he told me that the, he had bought a GE Super Radio. And he says, they're really, really good. Because he was getting into loop antennas and that. And he says, I can move the radio around the house. Uh, a lot of these radios, too, really perform well on batteries because they're so sensitive. Once you use the line cord, uh, you can get noises into the line cord, into the radio. So by using the radio on batteries, uh, you get you bet you get better sound. You get less noises and static and stuff. And the other thing too is the GE Super Radio gets really good life on batteries. You you get probably if you put batteries in and use it on and off, you'll probably get a year out of the batteries. But I just want to show you that's what an AMDX rig is. It's got the extra parts in it, and it was for people out in remote areas. And uh, GE knew that there's. Like I said, there's parts of this country that you just can't get AM radio. Now, with cell phones, if you have a cell phone tower near you, uh, you can stream any channel, any station, any television station. But also remember, if you're into prepping, uh, the cell phone tower goes down. Uh, you, you have no communication with the outside world. I think that's it. All right. That's it.